Well, hey everyone, and welcome to whyamigreen.com. We are live. This is actually my first live stream, I believe, with whyamigreen.com. And I got everything going on here. Okay, you got noise over there, noise over here. So welcome. <laughs> and today, what I wanted to do is come on and do a question and answer series on anything you have. I've been having a lot of people send comments, ask questions about growing, especially, you know, we have some uh, great videos on growing uh, with uh, the bags, the pouches, uh, growing bags. And uh, in the next week or so, I'm putting together, you probably saw on the thumbnail, a kiddie pool system again this year. So if you have questions about kiddie pools, about grow bags, about growing seeds, uh, anything, green <laughs> money <laughs> uh let us know well let me know i say us because reluca is just uh, sitting on the other side watching too uh, she is my my co-green partner so if anyone's watching right now i'd appreciate you popping in saying hi the whole idea is to have folks to speak to so come on in say hello tell me uh who you are where you're from ask your questions and i'm saying that right now because once you ask a question it takes Oh, sometimes a few minutes for it to get from you to me. So I'll start counting 10, 9, 8. And so this is kind of an informal thing. We just want to have fun. And yeah, I was talking to you about Reluca. There she is. She's saying, hello, hello, Reluca. <laughs> I'm yelling, hello, Reluca. She could probably hear me over there as easy as I go from here. And you know what she wants? I want my tomatoes now. <laughs> If you saw my recent video, what we did is uh, Reluca was at the store and she found some crimson tomatoes and she loves these things. Uh, they're kind of like a, a hearty tomato. They don't have, you know, they're all, not all one you cut and it just falls apart. A hearty tomato. They're great for Italian sandwiches, which we're French, but we make Italian sandwiches. It's a big thing up here in Maine. And uh couldn't find any seeds for it. So what we did was, and you'll see this in the last video uh, we made, we sliced the tomatoes in thin slices, put them just underneath the soil in some potting soil. And within about five days, actually the tomatoes were all about this big already. So within five days, they started sprouting out. And we must have 20, 25. I only took a few slices from one tomato, but we get like 20 or 25 uh, crimson tomato uh plants growing from those slices so we're gonna have crimson tomatoes coming out the ears <laughs> you know they say corn has ears but uh, so so do we <laughs> and let's see who do we got we got john holst hi i'm from denmark looking to make an alaskan alaska bucket system Ooh uh you probably saw the the one we had matter of fact as i'm talking to you I'm going to try to see if I could get that up here. Uh, let's see. That's on my green site. Green, green, green. Right there. And, uh, yeah, the Alaska bucket system. Have you done one before, John? You get some information on it. Um, it's, it's a wonderful system. I think of all the systems we've done, uh, that was probably one of the best, one of the most successful ones. In fact, on my growing site, I should have something on here about – I've got a bunch of pictures. Let me go ahead and do a share. Let's see. This is kind of fun to try to figure out how to do shares. Invite, share, share. That's not to be confused with Sunny and share. Okay. Share screen. So many little things. Share screen again. And select window. Oh, boy. Look at that. Number one. After all that work. There we go. There's a screen I just shared. And... This is our site, whyamigreen.com, and let me get you off here, John. And uh, on this system, on this page, you can see we have all kinds of different things that we've done here on our green channel, and here it is right here, the Alaska bucket system. Let's see if that's going to be big or not. Oh, that's just taking me to here. <laughs> I do have it here somewhere, honestly. Oh, gosh. Let's see. Go to videos. So what kind of questions do you have about the Alaska bucket, or do you, John? I'm trying to look through underneath my my mouse here, my uh, 
speaker. And I'm going to put mute on because I don't want to really hear this right now. So this is the Alaska bucket as I was making it. And as you can see here in the picture, let me go a little bit more forward. It has the main, this is the, I have a water bucket sitting high. It goes into this bucket with a float. And the float keeps the water probably about an inch and a half deep. And as you can see here, I'm going to stop this. The, the float is up here, up, up on a table. You can't really see that right now. Uh, excuse me, the uh, reservoir bucket, the big one. So I put my water up there. Now, I eventually put this outside. This was actually in a spare room because I was putting it together to see how it works. So I did put it outside and I actually did it with a lot of buckets. But the water comes from up here. It comes down, goes through that tube, goes in this bucket with the float in it. Then it goes from there into this tube down there. And you see I have it going like in a circle and feeds each one of the buckets. So let's go a little further so you can see what I did with that. You see with the arrow, the water's there. Let me get my commercial out of here. The water went in here, then in this bucket, and then in that bucket. And, then, you know, you plant in the top like you would. Then in that bucket. <laughs> and now the way this goes, I want to take this back a little bit just so you could see. Get it looking pretty here. Now you see the bucket has sand in it. Let's get a nice one. There we go where it's not. The bucket has sand in the top, and it has holes in the side, and it has a bag. I actually have a canvas bag. I do it with grow bags now. They seem to be a lot better. But this was like a canvas bags that you have in the supermarket type thing. And let's see, make, make this here. So what I did is I had the bag. I put it inside, and I taped it, uh, taped it so it stayed up there. And I fill it up with soil, okay? And what happens is the water goes in the bucket, fills in the bottom of that deep, and then it soaks into the bag, kind of goes up in the soil, so the soil can always, or the plants can always pull in the amount of water they need because there is constantly like an inch and a half of water in the bottom. And that's the whole idea of the float in this blue bucket right there. So water goes in there. It constantly keeps level, you know, the, uh, level amount of water. Now the grow bags, the whole idea of the grow bags is air pruning, if you're familiar with that. When the roots kind of go to the side, uh, the sun will kind of prune off the roots as they start to grow through. So that's why the Alaska bucket has the holes in the side, so you can still take advantage of the air pruning at the same time. So that's kind of matter of fact, if you go uh, on the videos on my site, they'll actually show you how to do all this stuff uh, on our channel. And uh, we also have uh, a bunch of instructions on our website, whyamigreen.com. Go at the top and it says free plans, and it'll show you how to make a lot of this stuff. But, so that's pretty much how that works. And you put the plants in the top, and they take the water they want. And since it's air pruning, they never get root bound. And, I mean, I've had in buckets like this corn the cob that was 10 feet tall, and you'll see that in another video we have. And out of the same bucket, one bucket like that, 10-foot tall corn and 23-foot long string beans. Well, not the beans themselves, but the plants. <laughs> Can you imagine a string bean 23 feet long? Whoa. <laughs> Let's see. So that's how I have that, and let's see, uh, Dusty John right here. I want to see if there's any. Uh, it says, mine will go into the greenhouse, but it's hard to find the fittings and buckets in here. Uh, any five-gallon bucket. I mean, I don't know if you guys have Walmart or, you know, any uh, Home Depot package place. Any five-gallon bucket will work, and uh, you can make any size hole. I made, like, I think maybe an uh, inch and a half or inch holes, you know, with just a uh, regular drill bit, you know. Uh, so you make a holes, and so you could use any any size bucket. It doesn't have to be five gal, you know, five gallons or that tall. It can be shorter. Uh, I've had wonderful gardens with three gallon buckets. Okay, so uh, you can do it with any size you want. How long do grow bag uh, grow bags last in the water? Well. A regular grow bag, like a felt bag, the ones you get from, uh, I get them from Amazon, um, they will last the entire year. Matter of fact, on the deck right now, I'm getting ready to do my kiddie pool system. Uh, some of those bags, they're on the third year, okay? Uh, most of them are second year, but some of them are third year. What I do is at the end of the year, I pull out the tomatoes, I cut off the tomatoes, and I just 
leave the soil right on the deck. <laughs> and this year what I'm going to do is dump them into one of the pools, mix them up, put some more fertilizer, and put them right back in. So uh, they'll last. They'll last quite a while. And S. Hill. Okay. Welcome, Mr. Hill or Miss Hill, who I don't know what S is. It could be Sam, Sally. She. Anyway, hi. Do kitty pools have food safe plastic? I have no idea. Okay. To me, it's like the plastic buckets, plastic pools. Um, I've never worried about it. My eyes aren't glowing. Uh, I know tons of people do it. Uh, it's and a lot of the I found out about these from some of the really big names in gardening. So uh, I figure there's something in anything that's gonna kill you. Okay, plastic food bags, plastic this. You know they say they're food safe, but there's always something not safe. So to me, they're safe enough. If I could put my kid in there to swim and put my dog in there to drink, because they're you know doggy pools, right? I think they're gonna be good enough for me to to do that with. <laughs> And let's see, what's the next one? How long do grow bags last in water? Oops, did uh, oh, I already answered that one. <laughs> so, uh, like I said, I, I've, I've never had a problem with them. Uh, yeah, I mean, I've had, uh, if you look at some of the videos, some of them I had a long trench type thing with, with them in the water. They don't really fall apart like you'd think they would. I mean, Walmart bags do. I mean, you, some of you have seen when I do my, I did my grow bag one on one thing. I showed how to do it with the felt bags that you get from the uh, uh, Amazon. I did them with Walmart bags. Walmart ones they do fall apart, and you know, yeah, you're only paying a dollar a piece for them. But when you go to move them, because I like to move mine a lot, they let go. Um, I've made my own with. Uh, landscape cloth i think they call it i've made it with landscape cloth and uh sewed them and that's kind of nice but you know the amount of work you got to pay for the cloth the time sewing them and i had to go out and buy a sewing machine it's a lot cheaper just to buy the bags and if you go online there's lots of them unfortunately if you do it this time of year sometimes you're going to be limited to what you can get because everyone's already started you know uh, so, you know, take a look at what you can get. I know a lot of stores, a lot of department stores are carrying grow bags now, but they seem to be a lot cheaper on Amazon than you're going to find them in Walmart or the package stores. I've seen some of them up to, you know, six bucks, seven bucks, and I could usually get two or three for that online. Um, let's see, what do we have? And John says, thanks a lot. I'll go to your website and look at the plans. Woohoo! Yeah, I'm not sure if I have the exact plan, the plans for that, but we have plans for a bunch of different uh, type things. Uh, but if they're not, the plans aren't there, just go to the uh, website. I'll just go to the channel, and you can look at the videos because a lot of the videos, when I show how to build something, I show myself building it, I like to explain how it's done too. Uh, so that way everybody can get a chance to do it. So if you have any more questions, go ahead and jump in. And yeah, uh, this here, like I said, the Alaska bucket system, I would like to do that one. I thought of doing it again this year, and it's a, it's a great system. The only problem is it's time consuming. It's very time consuming to make, to make all those holes. <laughs> you know, when you, when you first start doing something, you really take your time and you want to be perfect. I mean, I was measuring the holes, <laughs> you know, three here, four here, three, and so many inches apart. You can see some of these are in pretty good lines. Um, but I was measuring them, trying to get them perfectly apart. After a while, it's just because you're going to take for <laughs> you're going to take forever uh, making those holes. But that was the biggest thing. Be careful. There's a I can't remember the name of the drill bit, but there's a special kind of drill bit. It's like a it's triangle, you know, kind of uh, at a point, and it goes up so you can drill, you know, uh, an eighth of an inch, a quarter inch, half an inch. The more you push it in, the bigger it goes. I use one of those. They seem to work best on the plastic. Um, but if you push too hard with a drill, you might just break the bucket, especially the cheap ones from Walmart. These buckets I got here, here's a little secret. <laughs> at the time, we had a friend uh, that owned a Chinese restaurant. It was a buffet restaurant, very busy. So every day, uh, I would go over there and she'd give me her bucket. So I'd get three, four buckets every day. And uh, I, I'm a fisherman and she loved fresh fish. She was saying her and her family couldn't get fresh fish since they've been here. So 
I'd go out fishing in the summer, I come back with these big five pound bass and I'd bring her two or three bass, walk right in the restaurant, give them the bass. And she'd say, oh, thank you, thank you. And go out back, we'll have some buckets. So it was kind of a trade thing. So I got my buckets for free. That's why, I mean, some of these, I think say soy sauce or something like that on it. So these were thicker. Some places will have thicker buckets. Um, this blue one was a Walmart one. So, I mean, like I said, they all work. Uh, and for the big bucket, for a while, I had those big 50-gallon uh, collapsible buckets. They're like cloth. But, you know, a trash can will seem to work, too. If you're worried about the chemicals, line it with plastic. But uh, I've never had problems. Like I said, I don't have radioactive eyes that I know of. Uh, <laughs> maybe I do. Uh, let's see. We're looking saying they do have them right now. Oh, she must have went online. So Amazon does have grow bags right now. Uh, let's see, um, Hill, do you find that larger diameter buckets bags dry out slower? Is there an ideal diameter? No, um, I don't worry about that. I wish I didn't really look at, you know, I wasn't sure what kind of questions I was going to be asked, but if you go, you know, through, through my website where it shows about grow bags, you're going to find on a few of my videos, the uh, what's the word I'm looking at? The recipe for the soil. If you get the right recipe for the soil, whether you have big bag, whether, I mean, I've seen people use the same kind of soil in these big, you've seen these big 50, uh, 50 gallon grow bags. They look like a kiddie pool and they fill them with soil. But if you get the right mixture of the soil, it's only going to pull in the water it needs. Don't, you know, people think, well, oh, if you have water, all that water is going to be there. It's going to be water bound and it's going to be soaked. No, it's not. Actually, you can put your hand in there, it's moist, but it's not mud, you know. It just pulls in enough water, and like I say, you I, I used to keep two inches of water, and with my 50-gallon bucket, I had one set up with kiddie pools with five kiddie pools and one 50-gallon uh, thing, a bucket. I used to go there once every three weeks to fill the bucket, and that's all I did all the whole season. Once every three weeks, I went fill, fill the, the bucket in the middle, did a little weeding, and that was all the upcake I had to do. So it's not really soaking. It only soaks it up as the sun kind of dries it out. So whether it's, you know, a three-gallon bucket, a five-gallon bucket, a seven-gallon bucket, or you don't even need the bucket if you're just doing grow bags in a kiddie pool. In a kiddie pool, I just use the bags because you don't need to have all the hoses and stuff, you know. Uh, so it doesn't really matter. It's going to soak it up. I believe it was kind of there's a mixture of uh, peat moss, Cow manure, I think you put twice as much peat moss. So let's say if I use five-gallon buckets, it was two five-gallon buckets of peat moss, one five-gallon bucket of cow manure. Then the rest was, you know, lime, uh, different kinds of bone meal and stuff like that. But the recipe is out there. Um, yeah. Oh, yes. Uh, new one says step drill. That's the kind of drill. Thank you. I couldn't think of the name. I've got like five of them, you know, because you they have a lot, they'll go up to an inch or go up to three quarter inches. And uh, another hobby besides my gardening is boat building. So I'm always, you know, I build my own boat. So I need drills. And uh, it's, it's nice to have it, but be careful when you start drilling. That thing goes fast. You want to get a hold of this big and boom, it goes too fat, too deep. Like these fittings. I think these fittings are half inch. I believe the half inch uh, fittings that I have on the bottom of the uh, Alaska buckets. You can make any size you want, but if you're using a step drill and <laughs> you you want to go half inch, but it's like an inch and uh, let's say a three quarter inch step drill, you might go right past it. So I get a step drill that will be the maximum is the size that I want to go, just to make sure it doesn't get any bigger. But there we go. See, no one says step drill. Woohoo! Thanks. <laughs> Yeah, it's been a quite a learning experience. I mean, I love some of the things you can do with this. I'm trying to get off this this page here and go back to. Let's see. Let's go back to the sharing part. What did I do with this? Do 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 do. There we go. And this is this is our uh, channel. Why am I green uh, for the. Uh, YouTube channel, and you can see as you go through here, it shows all the different systems that I've done. Uh, I've actually about five times now. I've done the you know tomatoes, like you can see right here, the tomatoes, two tomatoes, you know, slicing the tomato and uh, uh, planting it. 
So then one year I use these big, <laughs> those big buckets. It's, uh, it's a big bucket with a bunch of holes in it. And I've grown strawberries out of them, made like tower strawberries. That worked out really well. Oops, Raluca gave me some information here. And let me see what this is. I'll put this on. He goes, Rainy, uh, uh, tell them we bought both the V. She looked it up for me. There we go. If you want to know what, what bags I use, Vivo Sun 5-pack. Two gallon grow bags and heavy duty thickened non woven fabric with handles is what they're called. So, uh, five pack, two gallon. Yeah, we've used two gallons. I've done three gallons and I've done, I like the five gallons better uh, because they got handles and uh, usually the two and three gallons don't have handles. And I like the handles to be able to, and you know, they're a little taller, so I don't have to bend down so far. I pick them up and carry them around. Uh, but yeah, those things, the Viva Sun ones, they'll, they'll last for years. Uh, the cost, you know, they're not that expensive, so I keep them two years, maybe three, and throw them away just because sometimes you'll get uh, some moss or mold, not mold, but you know, moss growing outside, you know, on the shady side of them. So when that starts to happen, you know, at the end of the year, I'll throw that away. Uh, yeah, so they've worked out really well. Let's see other systems I've done. Is there's the Alaska bucket? You can see all the different buckets that I had here. Let's see if I can show you. Where are they? Yeah, see all the buckets. Look at that. Getting them all prepared. Yeah. Yeah. Stop it right there. And and that's what this is the day I spent out there uh, with my drill with my step drill. You know, I tried. You can see I tried hit here with the bigger holes. Look how big them, <laughs> them guys are. Uh, so I made some big holes, some small holes. These are the Walmart ones. These are the Kikoman sauce. Uh, so, yeah, this year here I actually had, you saw in the picture of the video I showed you, I had only like five of them. But this year here I had them going all the way around the deck. I don't know if I had like maybe 20 buckets all hooked up to the same stream. And I had them going both ways from, matter of fact, you could see, Right over there, there's my 50-gallon collapsible bag. I had two of them connected to each other. And I had, you know, one string of them coming out to the left, one string going out to the right. So uh, you could even make them double layers if you want. But if you're going to make two layers, you want to make sure the water goes, you know, in one layer. Then you're going to have to have a second line for the other one. Otherwise, your lower layer will drown. So you only need about an inch and a half of water. So, anyways, that's that part there. And on my site itself, the website, let's see, where is that green right here? Yeah, see, this shows over here. There's a picture of, uh, at one time I made them with PVC pipe. I don't know if you can see this at all. Let me make this full size. Yeah, oops. Yeah, you can see over here with this picture at one time I made like an A-frame when I had strawberries and all kinds of stuff. And the water kind of went, you know, from one side to the other to the other and kind of like going going down like this, one pipe and then another pipe and another pipe. Went into a bucket and was pumped back up. And I have the plans for that. I made little aquaponic, five-gallon aquaponic systems out of those five-gallon, uh, those big five-gallon uh, buckets. There's a single, then I had a duffel. This is something I'm going to do this year also. Uh, let's see if this is going to show a picture for this. Yeah, I think if I make those big, they don't show. Is the uh, what they call capillary capillary system. Is I'm going to get two uh, smaller, uh, you know, because right now I think the, the big uh, kiddie pools are like four feet. I'm going to get two smaller kiddie pools, fill them with dirt, and then I'm going to have a bucket to the side of them. And what you do is you take cloth, uh, maybe like towels or anything that's cotton, and stick one end in the water bucket and have it come out and bury the other part underneath the soil. So you want to tie a few of them together so there's, you know, the soil is on top of the cloth. And just keep filling the bucket, and the water just seeps through the cloth and goes into the soil and waters the soil by itself, and it takes what the soil needs. I did that one year with, uh, what did I put in that, cabbage? I had put broccoli and some other stuff, tomatoes, peppers, big mistake. I didn't realize cabbage. You know, I go to the store, cabbage is this big. Those things were, I couldn't believe how big it was. Uh, it was like three or four of them took over the whole pool and drowned everything out. Uh, stuff grows really fast in there. But the cloth that, you know, you're using to suck the water up, 
uh, has to be cotton. So I think when I first did it, I did it with t-shirts. I had a bunch of old cotton t-shirts, tied them together, made strips. But eventually that started to rot because of the sun and the weather and all that. So I think towels, cl uh, cotton towels would work a lot better for that. Let's see if I have a picture of that somewhere. Yeah, I do have it there. I want to see uh, what my plans are. Plans and downloads. Yeah, you can see here. Oops. This is the aquaponic system I made with a five-gallon bucket. And then this one I made with two buckets. I had plants growing up there, plants growing in the middle, plants growing in the bottom. Uh, yeah, that was fun. Then it went down here in the bottom, and in the bottom I had fish. <laughs> so to fertilize it, and then the water came back up at the top and went all the way through. And I had a, a little pump there on a system. It was like an irrigation system every – Oh, three quarters of an hour, it would completely drain and then fill back up. And I was using those little cocoa, is it cocoa choir or whatever? They're little like pebbles. They look like co cocoa puffs, <laughs> but little clay pe uh, pebbles in there. If you go onto the page, you can see this all, you know, in enlarged. This is the same thing, two gallon. Uh, the bottom five gallon bucket had fish in it and water. The top five gallon bucket had plants in it. And you can see this is when I just started the plants. And then I had a little irrigation system, a drain, like a sump type thing. And the water would fill up so far and it would just, shoom, it would drain out completely. And then it would start filling up again slowly, which gave really good irrigation to the, to the roots. Oh, there we go. There's my NFT hydroponic system. That's the one I was telling you about where there's a little bucket down here on the left side. And you fill that up. You can put fish in there too if you want. And it'll... It pumps the water all the way up to the top. You can see going in here. Then from the top, it goes all the way down, then down to the next one, all the way down. It only puts a little stream of water going down, you know, each each pipe. And the roots, you want to let the roots dangle down so they actually touch the water. And uh, it's, they grow like crazy. You can see here I got lettuce, I got strawberries, and down here and down here. And I just built it on one side. I could have uh, put another four on the other side. I built it so it was collapsible so I could pick the thing up and walk around with it, take it out. But that was a pretty neat system. And that's just a uh, grow frame. Oh, there's my kiddie pool one. The one I told you about I had uh, with five. This had five kiddie pools. And I had a five-gallon Walmart grow bag in the middle. And I had three-gallon. It was two it was, maybe two gallon, two gallon buckets, uh, uh, cloth bags on the outside. So each pool had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, two gallons and one five gallon in the middle. And the two gallons, I had peppers, I had eggplants, I had tomatoes, uh, different kinds of tomatoes. I had scallions. And in the middle, I had corn on the cob and string beans because the corn would grow fast and the string beans would grow around it and it would give the rest of the plants a little bit of shade. It was kind of neat because the bucket in the middle supplied all the water. It went into this little blue bucket on the side, which was my float. And it was funny because about maybe a couple weeks after the, it was set up, I went out to look and there were two frogs in there. <laughs> Some frogs jumped in. They they set up home, set up house, and uh, they stayed there pretty much the whole summer eating mosquitoes, which was nice. Uh, so a kind of neat little system. This year I'm thinking of doing the same thing and maybe getting some polywogs to put in there for frogs. And I'm thinking maybe even get some small fish to swim because I'm going to leave two inches of water. So I don't know, maybe some uh, small shiners or goldfish or something like that to help eat the mosquito larvae. Or you can use those dunks, you know, those dunk things. And this, this, shows, this actually shows how to build the system, shows the float. And you can get this float. I think I even have the name of it. You can get that on Amazon. All the parts of Amazon or any one of those, there's a lot of uh, a lot of cities now have these green stores where you can go in and buy tubing and all that stuff. And there's the plans. See that? I'm an engineer. So I even drew the plans and showing you exactly how everything goes. And, oh, look at this one. This is a picture towards the end of the year. Look at my corn and the cob coming out and the tomatoes and everything all around the outside. Look at that. Even the lawn is growing. <laughs> I didn't mow, didn't mow that enough. Oh, this is that wicking capillary system. See what I have? I have two buckets, and I have uh, basically a water. This is a small one. I made it with a watering can, and I have T-shirts, like I said, cotton T-shirts going under the soil and going right in the bucket, under the soil and in the bucket. And I just filled up the bucket with my hose, and the water came out. 
and went into the soil. And this one here, you can see this one has, looks like spinach. And this one has kale and lettuce. And you can see how they're growing really well. And then I like this little one so much that I decided to make this one here. This is the one where I said I put eventually put cabbage in. You can see the cabbage starting right here, just a little cabbage. And then <laughs> you can see the tomatoes and everything got pushed out by the cabbage. It was crazy. <laughs> and uh, yeah, this is on the deck. You can see that was the same year I did that one. Then I also had the Alaska buckets and I have corn on the cob growing here. You can see the leaves going over. So yeah, I just have a little deck over here and uh, the deck is usually looking like a jungle like this one here and I plant below it as well on the ground. Whew. So that's what I have for you folks. If you have any other questions, uh, go ahead and ask. And I know I've been doing a lot of talking here and uh, I'll stop talking, see what you got. <laughs> and I hope I was able to help some of you. And keep in touch. I'd like to see how your gardens are doing. Uh, we didn't have much activity this winter. I wasn't really doing anything over the winter uh, with uh, gardening because my day job kept us busy. So we're just starting up. I planted uh, a, lot, a couple of days ago. We did one with seeds. And uh, so, we're, you know, I'm going to be starting up with the showing you folks how the kiddie pool goes. And I'm going to – I got a, quite a few things we're going to do. So I'll be doing, you know, videos throughout the summer. Uh, showing you our progress and so keep in touch and uh, if there's anything you'd like to know about anything I could help you with maybe I could show you you know in a future video I mean we grew we were, last year we did grafting tomatoes all kinds of fun stuff I see something new uh, on the on online and I like to try it out and I think either everybody has Falling asleep or they get tired of typing. So because of that, <laughs> I don't want to stay too long here. Raluca's waiting to start cooking uh, because I'm right now in the kitchen keeping the room busy. And let me go back here. So I would like to thank you folks for your support, for uh, keeping us going all this time. And it's because of viewers like you that keep me motivated to continue doing this. Uh, so for those of you that are watching now and watching later, go ahead and click on the subscribe below. It's right down over there, okay? And that keeps us going. Of course, the more you subscribe, the better the algorithms are, and the more people that come see us from YouTube, and the more people can help and the happier I am. So that's about it. Again, thank you, everyone. I uh, wish you all happy growing. And well, Lucas says, I'll be cooking veggies, not wings. <laughs> uh -uh. Maybe I'll stay on here and not let her cook. I don't no, I like veggies. I just like wings better. I'm trying to cook, to get seeds to grow chicken wings. But uh it's tough to do that. So with that, <laughs> you guys have a great day, and I will see you next time. Bye-bye now.